stereo again. <laughs> Dual recording. Okay, let me see here. As soon as they drove through the gate, Mark stopped to check on his brother. Mike was still unconscious, but was improving. Lisa felt that he might wake up at any time. Anxious for news on the outcome of the election, Mark was disappointed to learn that the polls were to be open for at least two more days. The turnout had been record-breaking. The election supervisors had only expected about half of the normal turnout, but almost twice as many people as normal had come to vote. I'm realizing that I don't have a headset on except on the phone. I'll swap it back, deal with it. I could have two of them, but I don't know where the other one is. In the car. All right. The election supervisors had only expected about half of the normal turnout, but almost twice as many people as normal had come to vote. They'd run out of ballots by 2 o'clock on the second day. The committee had printed more using an old hand-cranked mimeograph machine the Methodist Church owned to print their church bulletins. Even with working through the night, they printed only enough ballots to last until noon on the third day. Some of the voters were upset that they had to come back, but most took it in stride and understood the delay. Mark did feel that the record turnout was a good sign for Rob. That more than offset any angst about the delay. Gunny's debriefing went quickly. The old man speculated that they'd check the place out again in a week or two. Mark returned home in time for lunch. It was much less dreary around the table now that everyone was sure Mike was going to live. Mike, Mark didn't want to get his hopes up too much, but he was feeling more optimistic as well. Not just about his brother, but about almost everything. He decided to go down to the ranch the next morning and help with the disassembly of the cabins. That would take his mind off the election and let him see how things were going. Early the next morning, <clears throat> he left with a group of men and women who would work at the ranch for two days. They arrived to find the work going well. Two of the cabins were almost totally disassembled, and two more were beginning to be worked on. Mark found Shaparo and got the lowdown. The prisoners were working very hard, hoping their labor might gain them some goodwill. Mark toiled, loading the trailers and trucks that would return to Silver Hills tonight with a third of the workforce. The work was grueling, but Mark took pleasure in it. It kept, mostly kept his mind off of other things, and it felt great to work up a good sweat. The meal prepared for them that night was simple, but Mark couldn't remember tasting anything so good for a long time. He and the other men he sat with ate like horses. Shaparo laughed that during the first couple of days, the cooks hadn't made enough food, and they had to cook more food at the good-natured demand of the workers. Mark slept like a baby. With tired muscles, a full belly, and a real hot shower with water pressure, the cot he was on could have been made of barbed wire or cotton candy, and it wouldn't have made a difference. He woke up sore, but refreshed, hard to remembering putting his head on the pillow. This day, he helped to take apart one of the cabins. The work was hard, but not as arduous as the day before. Late in the afternoon, he and the crew he'd brought down returned home. Mike had woken up. Although he was sleeping only over 20 hours a day, he still was able to spend some time with his family. The mood of all the Turners was joyous as the doctor now gave Mike a better than 90% chance for a full recovery. Lisa told Mark that she'd be sure to call him the next time Mike woke up. The voting had ended, but the election committee had said it might take them two or three days to finish counting the ballots. Oh, yeah, we're right. All right. Mark was again slightly perturbed that he had to wait. But what else could he do? Early the next morning, Mike, Mark got to visit with Mike.